Welcome to Rethinking Cash Flow Management, brought to you by the Controllers Council. My name is Neil Brown, Executive Director of the Controllers Council. And before I introduce our expert panelists and our partner sponsor, let me share some brief housekeeping items. We'll have Q&A at the end of the presentation, so please use your GoToWebinar control panel to ask our experts questions. Next, we will have three polling questions. While this webinar is not CPE eligible, please answer the polls to benchmark your peers. And again, please use your GoToWebinar control panel. And finally, you'll receive a link to this webcast via email in the next 24 hours, so no need for notes or screenshots. So with that, a word from our partner and sponsor, Bill, a leader in financial automation software for small and mid-sized businesses. Learn more at www.bill.com. With that, I'm pleased to introduce our expert panelists. Ken Fick is president and CEO of FPA Experts. That provides FPNA, of course, but also budgeting and related services with more than 20 years of experience in both corporate finance and, and consulting. Ken is a frequent contributor to media outlets on a variety of corporate finance and accounting topics. Joe Flesher is webinar content marketing manager for Bill. And Joe has more than 16 years experience, including CFO.com and Arga. Gentlemen, welcome, and Joe, please take it away. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much. And I'm excited to begin our discussion of rethinking cash flow management. I'd like to outline what we're going to cover during the course of our webinar. During our webinar, we will consider the following. First of all, we will consider budgeting strategies to account for not only cash inflows, but also outflows. Um, also, we're going to discuss, and this is very, very important as, as well, uh, negotiating and renegotiating uh, terms. And also, we're going to talk about exploring alternate or alternative payment options with customers and suppliers. Um, we're also going to consider uh, options for getting access to additional capital. This is in addition to traditional means of doing so, and also how to leverage automation to improve visibility into and control over cash flow. So uh, these are the items that we're gonna cover and I'm looking forward to our discussion. I think the first question that we need to address is um, in your observation, Ken, what have you seen as the most significant challenges that both small and mid-sized businesses are encountering not only with sustaining, but perhaps improving access to capital. Uh, thanks, Joe. It's great to be here. There are several key areas that I think are, 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 are more poignant for small and medium-sized businesses. The, the first one I'd say is limited options right now. Uh, right now, and unfortunately, a lot of uh, people got nervous with the, the recent uh, you know, Silicon Valley Bank and so on. They pulled a lot of their deposits uh, that over 250000 into the larger, quote, you know, too big to fail banks. And that really curtails their lending. Um, and I think that's something I'm seeing within the market, but I would encourage people that, you know, to work with their bankers and look to, in addition, just small businesses, or I'm sorry, uh, smaller banks, but other types of lending, like leasing or lines of credit or merchant, merchant cash, cash advances, in addition to um, just the regular community bank, uh, would be one way to kind of mitigate this, this limiting of options that I'm seeing within the market. The... Another another area would be the limited credit history that I see. So a lot of times um, there just isn't they, the the company hasn't been in business very long. So it's harder for a banker to get comfortable with the cash flows and understanding of the the uh, ability of the business to make profit and pay back the loan uh, within the market. There's always a lack of collateral, right? There's just never enough collateral, no, no matter what. So that's another area that I see as a, as an opportunity. In the cash flow issues, what I mean there is that there's challenges for small and medium-sized businesses on the timing 
of the cash flow, um, especially those just just you know uh, just starting out. So what I mean by that is all businesses have some type of seasonality. So I'm coming from uh, the CPA business um, and as head of FP&A for uh, several large consulting firms, they had a spike in revenue and cash in the first quarter because you know, that's when all the taxes were done. They also had a spike in October, but we were cash flow negative or, or we, we tend to lose money, these businesses tend to, um, over the summertime and really in, in November, December, right? We're not doing a lot of there. So, you know, looking at when you need the cash, not just, you know, and how the cash comes in and then budgeting it beyond that, I think is, is something that I've seen uh, within the market as well too. Um, higher interest rates. I mean, so I looked, I looked up the SBA loan for, let's say, I think it was a seven year. So it's prime plus five. That's over 13% now. So it's eating up that cash flow, right? I understand the Fed's doing it on purpose to slow the economy down. Nobody likes inflation. I mean, I, I understand the whole metric, but when it's your personal bottom line, <laughs> you know, that, that's something that, that affects you. Um, and I'd say the last one is, is limited resources. So not every small and medium sized business has the ability to hire a fractional CFO or have the expertise necessarily to put the financial information of the business in the best light to sell it to not only banks for, for cash flows, but for vendors and other things. They just it limited in that capacity and they might be nervous on bringing somebody on, right? They definitely don't have to be full time, but either a financial consultant or a manager beyond a bookkeeper that could do a lot of this paperwork. And I think that uh, that would be uh, is one thing that I'm also seeing in the market. Well, thank you very much, Ken. And this indeed leads to our first of three polling questions. Neil, I'll turn it over to you to pose our first of three polling questions. Excellent, thank you. All right, let's do a quick poll. My company's percentage of delayed payments rose a lot during the past 12 months relative to the prior 12 months. Uh, select one of the following. Strongly agreed, uh, et cetera. Please take a few seconds so we can benchmark. It'd be interesting to see what the answer to this is in the next 12 months. All right, we're almost at a majority voting. A couple more seconds. Let's share the results. Gentlemen, what are your thoughts on these? I'll, I'll start and then Ken, I'd love to hear your perspective. So what's interesting is that a, um, a minority but you know a rat you know it, it, it's pretty close you know i think what's most telling in my opinion is the i don't know i mean that's really interesting uh but you know if we disc if we don't factor in the i don't know which we should um it's almost even in terms of agreeing and disagreeing ken what are your thoughts uh that is interesting to see that but what's more interesting is probably if we talk to the participants here what I've found is the delayed payments is less a financial issue and more a human resource complexity issue. And we're still, in, in my opinion, in a very tight labor market and trying to get enough resources available to process a lot of the payables and to process a lot of these transactions, either domestically or internationally, I think is, is probably what is driving the strongly agree or agree in regards to the 